Alright guys, this is my current setup. This is my 370 amp alternator and this is my slightly upgraded factory alternator. And what I want to do is separate these two electrical systems. Now, the factory battery is over here and I currently have a power wire running over to my distribution box, which is also my fuses going to the back. Um, but, I want to disconnect part of this. So what I'm going to do is I need to disconnect this wire from the system so that that battery is isolated. Okay. That battery is already getting power from under here from uh, the factory alternator. So that system would be separate except for these two lines. I want to put a breaker in between on these charge wires between these two alternators so i want to put a breaker here and a breaker there so that i can flip that switch and flip this switch and let the vehicle's factory system run by itself and the audio system's uh, alternator run by itself and then if i want to i can close them up and allow them all to connect one of the cool things about this is, for one, it allows the factory GM charging system to do its crazy thing and let my uh, my uh, aftermarket alternator run 14.8 on my audio system. The second thing it does is allow me to have a backup in case I'm out doing demos or I'm sitting around letting my music play and my batteries die. I can close those two switches, bring this battery back into the circuit, and start the vehicle. So, you've seen what I'm already at. Now I'm going to make some modifications to make all that work. So you can see the factory wire is connected under here. Still connected to the alternator. We're going to leave that. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, instead of having two runs running from point to point, I'm going to have one running. And I'm going to use the second wire as the second, the comeback wire for my, uh, uh, breaker. So I think I'm going to keep this back wire and I'm going to take this front wire loose. And I use these little stubby wrenches for this stuff. It keeps me from uh, accidentally grounding it against things. It helps to uh, prevent those. So I like the stubbies. Also, you don't need to put a lot of torque on these connections. So stubby kind of, by default, tones down your torque. I'm gonna keep this one connected here. There we go. And this one is the one I'm gonna keep connected, but I have to disconnect it here for now. So I'll go ahead and do that. Those are hot, so we don't want those to touch anything. Made sure I was going to be clear there. I'm going to put this bolt back in because it's good practice. So now I'm going to keep that out of there but I'm gonna keep uh, the back one and I think I'm gonna run it through this hole here around this shroud so let's go ahead and get this one off I'm gonna leave the distribution block here because it makes things easier and at some point I may want to change this up a little bit and having that air already there just uh, just makes that easier these two as my in and out for uh, my breaker 
So I'm not sure that that's gonna work, but that's the plan. I'm gonna mix that up and then we'll swing that around. I think that will work. I think having this come out of here will uh, be pretty good for the alignment of everything. Screw that one back in. There we go. So then I just need to figure out where I'm going to put the breaker at. All right. It's a big hole, but it'll work. Now I've got to figure out exactly how I'm doing this. Something like that would be cool. Okay, also, oh yeah, that would work too. I can mount that bad boy right there. Let me get my other wire. So I have to figure out how this is all going to lay out. On the side, on this side, that wire is hot. Since I had the breaker open, the other one won't be, but uh, I've still got that wire is hot. And I can't disconnect my ground because I have too many of them. It would be just impossible. See, it would take half an hour to go around and I still wouldn't have all the grounds disconnected. So that's not really a thing. You just gotta operate with the care, essentially. So the breaker's open, which means this side should be dead. Now if I mount that right there, that, I'm letting the wire kind of push me around here and dictate how I do this. That's the plan anyway. Well, I could attach this to this harness right here. That would work. Come up like this. It's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and this will be hot too. As soon as I connect to this, then the whole thing is hot, but it's all connected also, so that's good. I can always make another wire if I need to. Um, but right now I'm trying to uh, just work with what's here and see how that goes. So now let me adjust that. Figure out how that's gonna go. So I can come out here with my power wire. This is a wiring harness. Attach that breaker to that wiring harness right over here to where it will all connect. That'd be pretty cool. I'm digging that, I think, guys. Just something like this. Something like this would be great. So, since I'm digging that now and I got it in position, I'm going to tighten up my connections here, uh, which will help make it stay put. I haven't had any of these tight though, up to that point, because you want the wires to be able to move the way they want to move. You want this thing to want to stay where it's at just because it likes it there. Um, you don't want to be fighting the wires. Now this breaker here disconnects the factory alternator from the 
aftermarket circuit that isolates the factory alternator. Okay. The next thing we have to do is isolate the factory battery from the rest of the circuit. Because if I don't isolate the factory battery, since this alternator is charging that battery and that battery is connected to this system, it's also still connected to that alternator. You see, even though I took that bridge out, there's still a bridge. And we have to disconnect that, which is this long green wire coming over to here. I think the best place to do it is over here. And you see where I've connected this to the hard point before the fuse? And uh, I really didn't like taking this apart over here. It's a pain in the butt to get back together and make it look right. But I can put my, distribute my block, my uh, relay, my shit. I can put my switch here or anywhere along the back all the way up into I go into here so since I've got some slack down in here I can pull that either direction but this way is already tied up so I'm probably going to do it all over here that way I can get out here go over here flip two switches and be done the question is where am I going to put that switch at and Hmm, thinking maybe right there. Maybe. Let me get me a switch and start figuring that out. <coughs> Alright, after giving it a man stare for a little bit, I think what I'm going to do is take this wire loose here, bring it through here, and uh, put my breaker over here. This area, connect. Uh, a stubby I'm gonna get me a stubby wire and connect it to here and I'm gonna do the connection over here in this area so I ain't quite ironed out the details there but we will look at them first thing I want to do is take my uh, covers off of my GP fuse box I haven't really liked this wire running in this way so that's another reason why I'm kind of game to do this if you guys are inter interested this little combination wrench set right here from uh, wherever it is O'Reilly's or AutoZone is perfect for almost all this kind of stuff it's got the right wrenches I use the crap out of it Notice how I got my hand around this wrench. My fingers, I'm controlling everything it touches and everywhere it goes. Yeah, this is hot. I got my hand in, the wrench is in my hand. Handling your stuff properly is big deal whenever it's hot. This is still hot. It's best to use star washers instead of a split washers when it comes to this kind of stuff, but these particular terminals are tough enough to take the torque from the split washer because these are some solid fuse blocks. It's double checking my, I know all this is tight, but you can never be too careful, right? My idea what it was was to slip this through here <laughs> that was a shot in the dark that that would work those are my grounds going down to the going under the vehicle and going back to the amplifier rack I suppose that works that looks pretty good 
And since this is all hot uh, and these aren't grounded to anything, this is a safe place. Plus I got this wire is double, actually this is triple limbed right here. It's limbed three times. So because I have it running a long distance to the battery. All I need to do then is make a stubby over here somewhere to connect this other post to the battery. Yeah, I like it. I'm liking this. And this this grouping looks good too, so we're gonna we're gonna roll with that. Man, these uh, GP Car Audio products are freaking all awesome. <laughs> Honestly, guys, this is not a GP or Car Audio commercial, but it's the quality is just there, and I can't help but think about it every time I uh, every time I go into a project involving some of this stuff. It's like the one thing I don't have to worry about. It always is awesome. Always delivers. Make sure I got these little gnarled aluminum thumb studs. <laughs> Dude, it's just great. Okay, I think I'm gonna run this wire under these grounds. I should have done that already. All right, so now we've got our got our run sorted here we just have to figure out exactly how we're doing this part Ooh. well this comes in goes through the switch it's broken this gets power from the alternator from the batteries from the everything is back so it all was back into the circuit so yeah I'm just <laughs> Stupid checking, man. Making sure my my brain has not done something that was wrong. Like I said, there's a wrench for every size in that little uh, kit right there. Great kit. Now, either way it goes, these two have got to get connected. One of these um one of these wires, this one right here. I've got it, the fuse pulled on this anyway, so I'm going to get it out of the way for now. i got to redo that because it's a bad, there's a bad switch in it, so I pulled the fuse. And uh, that one goes to my lights out front. Let's go ahead and screw this on here. Get it down here to where it's kind of holding in place. And remembering that this wire is in fact hot, so I had the breaker open. Oh, all these wires are hot. So, do this. Then I would need to come off of this one to go around this way. It's not really, doesn't really make me happy. I have to reposition that. I suppose I can set that right there in that handle. All right, either way it goes, I need a little jumper. So let's go get that took care of see what we have in the recycle drawer of doom I got a whole lot of a whole lot of nice cable right here so most of that is a uh, four gauge or some alt gauge in there big old alt gauge there's a little stubby piece of alt gauge Pretty flexible. Alright, so as you can see, if I run it that way and I curve it around, we're a little bit too long, so we're gonna have to lop some of it off. I'm gonna reposition it around a little bit until I find the perfect spot and figure out the length. Yeah, so basically we need about half of this. Oh yeah, we got a little squishy. <laughs> Okay, we crimped some ends on a little squishy. 
and I kept in mind the direction that Squishy was wanting to turn. So again, we're not fighting the wire, working with the wire. Now it's got to finish the dress up party. That uh, Dylas crimper, that Tempco Dylas crimper works really good, doesn't it? And now Squishy is done. Look at that. All right, little Squishy's getting home. Now we're just gonna sort this out. Got these loose, I'm gonna move them around, position it where I want it, tighten them down, making sure I don't get Squishy involved in this brace because they will like each other a lot. All right, tight, tight, tight. To make sure that Squishy and this thing didn't have any uh, teen activities, we, um, we did a little zip tie right here, this battery handle, which is nice, and a zip tie here, and the whole thing together is very solid at this point. Now, if everything went right, this is a pretty cool idea. So basically, what I'm doing is solving the problem with the the, the Tahoe telling me that the charging system is broken because it's charging at 14 plus volts. And also keeping the ability to have a backup battery. I explained this at the beginning. You're expecting way too much from this old truck driver. If you guys didn't catch it earlier, this little set right here will solve most of your problems. <laughs>